Skin in cattle is an erratic uh, disease. You don't see a lot of pyoderma in cattle. Uh, probably the place where I would see something uh, akin to it is in dairy cattle, uh, where they have a superficial moist pyoderma, typically uh, between their udder and their leg, somewhat based on conformation of the animal. Uh, if the udder is high and tight like we want it, uh, then very little problems, but the really large udders, this sort of thing, you can sometimes see that. I treat it really pretty much like a hot spot in a dog, uh, and that is I don't usually need antibiotics for it. Usually uh, clip the hair away from it, clean it up with an antiseptic soap, and apply an astringent. And an astringent, again, is going to be something that toughens the skin and dries it. It does so by precipitating the protein in the skin. Uh, <coughs> but uh, uh, you could treat with an anti-staphylococcal drug if necessary. I've already mentioned dermatophilus in the horse. Cows can get it uh, as well. So there again, procaine penicillin is your, your treatment of choice. Probably the most common skin condition, though, is ringworm. Uh, Griseofulvin systemically uh, has been used anecdotally in the past, but it is considered a carcinogen, so uh, we probably would not opt for that. Instead, we go primarily topical, and a variety of things can be used. Uh, chlorhexidine, either according to label directions, but in large animals, we'll often use the undiluted chlorhexidine, realizing that uh, if you repeat it too often, you can chemically burn the skin but uh, um, tinctures of iodine have been used. Historically, TBZ, which is a dewormer paste, was used, uh, hard to find now. Captan uh, is kind of an interesting treatment, <coughs> uh, and I almost didn't include it. Uh, cap, but it's my favorite one, that's why I did. Uh, uh, captan is a plant <laughs> antifungal, so it has no animal approval, and therefore that makes extra label use uh, tenuous at best, if not illegal. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but what you would do is you'd buy the uh, wettable powder, plant antifungal, uh, put it in a sprayer bottle, shake it up, and uh, spray it on the affected lesions. The reason I mention it, it um, has the most residual activity. Uh, I could take this in a herd of cattle and just have the owner spot spray every two to three days. Uh, and it seemed to, to work really well. Uh, otherwise, most things you're talking at least once a day, if not twice a day for most other topicals. Uh, <coughs> would I do it now? I don't know. I would in my own cattle. I don't know if I would do it necessarily. I'll leave it to the clinicians in bovine to say what they would do now. Uh, probably one of the, the, the issues, though, is the warning labels that the owner is going to have to put up with if, if they go and purchase the product. I mean, last time I checked, you could buy it at the co-op or a feed store, but you, you unfurl the warning label and like it started here and went down to the floor. Uh, it's got all sorts of warning labels about it being a carcinogen and these sorts of things. So probably just from the uh, perspective of uh, owner concern, I'd be a little reluctant. It would have to be a good owner, but it does work wonderfully. One of your most common problems is going to be foot rot, uh, which is due to fusobacter in cattle. Bacteroides can play a role, uh, as I recall, in sheep, and a whole variety of things will work in this. Ceftiofur uh, works on fusobacter. Its, its hole is with Clostridia, so it's fine for uh, foot rot, uh, all of these. Even the sulfonamides, curiously enough, have some benefit. Uh, I say curiously because sulfonamides don't get anaerobes worth a flip. The thought is that they're altering the microenvironment, the other bacteria that are susceptible, uh, so that the anaerobes uh, don't grow as easily. But mostly we're using the ones up above that in various uh, uh, scenarios. As I said, EDTI is an oral iodide that used to be approved to prevent foot rot. That's been removed. That label claim has been removed, unfortunately. Uh, so now it's just for uh, iodine supplementation. But any of those above uh, can be used. 
A big thing with foot rot, of course, is hygiene. Uh, and sometimes you can't control that. Uh, it's muddy environments around the troughs, this sort of thing, but you do the best you can and treat the active cases. Now, one of the things that can be done, especially in a, in a dairy herd scenario, but they'll use it in sheep and otherwise, uh, where they'll herd them through foot baths. And the nice thing about sheep is if you can ever get one going, then the others just follow it uh, along pretty well. Um, <clears throat> copper sulfate as a foot bath used to be the most common. Their concerns, one, with copper toxicity in sheep, not so much from the foot bath, but them drinking it or, and there's a general concern about contamination of the environment with copper. So more commonly now, zinc sulfate is used as a foot bath. The formalin, uh, remember formaldehyde is technically a gas, so formalin is just uh, a water solution with dissolved formaldehyde in it to varying uh, concentrations. Uh, it's the only thing that I'm aware of that controls hairy heel wart in dairy cattle, which is a contagious uh, disease, probably viral, uh, and that's where the formalin is, is most effective. Uh, I, it's kind of interesting so far the uh, government has stayed out of this and I say it's interesting because formaldehyde is considered a carcinogen uh, <clears throat> but it doesn't bother me from a topical standpoint it's going to have an astringent effect as well as an antiseptic effect uh, if you overdo it then you can actually cause cracking of the hoof wall and, and uh, dermatitis but properly used it works real well uh, the biggest problem, as I mentioned in the antiseptics with all these, is keeping the foot bath relatively clean. Uh, they always uh, seem to want to stop right over it and defecate. Um, so, but um, foot rot is a big part um, where you can use a foot bath. 